I'm in the kitchen again, but I wanted to show you how I love creating these little sage bundles. When I have so much in the garden that I harvest, I wanna to try to find ways to use some of that. And a lot of times I have a lot of herbs and you can only dry so much. So I like creating sage bundles, simpler ones that are like roses. This one has more flowers on it. So I'll go through what I use. I mostly will go through how to make this one. You can use your herbs right out of the garden. Wait about five days. If you're in a hurry, three days. The way that you tie it, when you tie it really tight, it will still Take, stay pretty tight. As you can see, it's completely dry and it's, it looks just fine. So, so let's go make some sage bundles. The best part is searching for the flowers that you're gonna use. And I love straw flowers. I mean, you can use so many different flowers, but straw flowers are great because they don't change when they dry up. The color is almost like they're paper and they sound like paper and the color doesn't fade. They're excellent. So if you can grow them in your garden, I really do encourage you to. to. I just began by gathering all of my materials. I ended up doing this project because my dear friend gave me a ton of rosemary and she also gave me a lot of lavender. You can see there on the background, I had harvested all the lavender and put it on that white plate. But I just, create a little bundle of the rosemary and I try to squeeze it so anything that's going to come off can come off. And then I'll just do a very simple loop. I turn it around and then I do it twice and then feed the string through the bottom. I do my bundles in layers. So the first layer is to tight the bundle on the bottom. The most important in creating a bundle of the sage is that you tie that string you're using or the twine so, so tight because like it starts drying, then the string can become loose. You want it super, super tight. Now I'm beginning to use a much longer string and I'm going to tie it all the way on the bottom and crisscross it all the way around to whatever length I want to tie up. I usually don't tie mine up all the way to the top. I tie it kind of halfway through because I'm gonna be doing layers on this so I don't need to tie it all up. And I kind of like the top of it being more loose. I love using lavender on these sage bundles. I had so many lavender that my friend gave me, but I do grow it in my garden. I don't have any white sage, and I use whatever I harvest for my garden. I love growing different types of sage. I love this variegated one. There's one that has more purple on it. It is really beautiful so i would encourage that you grow sage also in your garden you can use it for so many dishes but also for so many different crafts and even flower arranging you can see how pretty does this look in the garden i have it on my raised garden bed i grow it all over it just gives so much contrast and texture to the garden beds really beautiful Because of how thick this whole bundle is, I like to go ahead and tie this individually on the bottom also. So I'm doing that right now and making sure that the sage is firmly attached to the rosemary base. This is when I'm gonna go ahead and do the last layer of the background, which is I'm gonna get a very long strand of string or twine, whatever you decide to use. I will tie it on the bottom and then this is gonna be long enough that I am going to start wrapping it around over and over again. And what I'll do is I do little diagonals and crisscross it 
and then keep tying it up until it gets to the top, almost to the top of where the sage is. You can see I went halfway up, leaving some of the sage loose on top, but did it all the way that I know that is firm, it's not gonna fall off as I start burning the little bundle. I decided to insert a few more lavender pieces. And this is when I begin to give it a lot of color. So these are the straw flowers. I cut the back of them really close to the bottom so that they don't stick out. And then I just place them right on top. But look at the colors of the straw flowers. Aren't they beautiful? So I'm using some yellow ones and some strawberry color ones. And just place them in a way that you feel looks really nice. If you feel you have to add another layer, go ahead and do that. I added a little more sage. And those white flowers, they're the fever few. I love them. I like them more than chamomile because they just hold their shape a lot better. The fever few is also really good, just like chamomile on a warm tea. It gets rid of headaches. It has a lot of healing properties. So you may want to look into maybe growing and adding this one to your garden. Once you find that you like the way that everything is laid out, then begin to wrap it to the bottom again, tie it around a couple of times and just tie it firmly. This just takes a lot of patience and just enjoying the process. You will end up with such a beautiful sage bundle. The last step that I like to do is I like to cut the bottom to be completely even. The bottom just feels like it's more anchored down, looking a little cleaner. If you have found value on this video, please subscribe. It does help the channel to grow and be able to put more videos out for you. Use a metal bowl, never use a wood bowl, paper bowl. Remember that this is gonna be lit up and it's going to smoke and the heat can cause a fire. If you have one of those sage smudge sticks that are very tight, go ahead and open it up so that oxygen can get through it and that way it will be able to light up without a problem. Always remember to keep living your dream in that small garden.